Back by popular demand, we've got another best Amazon EDC video. The last one did really well. It was best Amazon EDC under 200. Thought it'd be fun today to increase the challenge and do the best EDC I can find on Amazon under $100. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Really quick though, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Glasses USA. They're a really great option if you wear glasses or sunglasses or contacts and you're on a budget. They essentially cut out the middleman and that's how they're able to offer really big discounts on even some designer brands like Ray-Ban, Gucci, Oakley. I know shopping for frames online can be a bit daunting or intimidating. They have several things on their website that help mitigate some of that risk and take away some of the pressure. First off, they have a 100% money back guarantee. They have free shipping and free returns for 14 days. They also have a quiz on their website to help determine the best frames for your needs and face shape, which I found really helpful. And then even if you're not someone that wears frames, they do have a ton of great deals on contact lenses up to 25% off on some of the top brands. They also have a virtual try-on feature on their website, which I found really helpful in narrowing down. You know, when you're looking at hundreds of different frames, it can be tough to figure out which ones are going to look best on your face. I end up getting a couple of different frames from Muse. Uh, the ones that you've seen here and in the past few videos are the Muse Elixir in the gray clear. Um, then I also ended up with the Muse Apex, which I really like this two-tone design. This is the tortoise and clear version. Um, both frames fit great. They look great. The optical quality was excellent as well. Be sure to check the links in the description below if you need some new frames. I know it had been about five years for me, so I'm really happy to be updating the look. Huge thanks again to Glasses USA for sponsoring this week's video. So the first item for our $100 EDC is the Casio F91. W. Now this is just such a classic icon. I'll admit I've been getting a little obsessed with some of these vintage Casio designs and just Casio digital watches in general. Uh, I started with the World Time Watch, that AE 1200. I've been talking to a bunch of you in the comments about Casios and G-Shocks. Just got a Mudmaster here and uh, like I said, I've kind of gone off the deep end with that. But the F91W is just such an icon. It came out in 1991 and was just so popular all throughout the 90s. No doubt a bunch of us probably had these when we were kids. I end up getting this silver and black two-tone option here. They have a handful of others, but this is only $16 for just such an iconic watch. It's water resistant, has a seven year battery life. The case size is 38 millimeters by 35 millimeters, although it does wear a lot smaller than that. So if you really are into like really big watches like the Mudmaster, this might be a bit small for you, but definitely smaller watches have been trending a lot more in recent years. Love the look and style of this. These cheap sort of iconic watches are always the biggest conversation starters too. You just can't go wrong with such a classic icon. Next item on the list is the Flowfold Minimalist Card Holder Wallet. Um, I discovered this looking around at some budget options and was just totally blown away by this. It's made here in the United States in Maine with recycled sailcloth. Two great things for me, never a deal breaker, but it's always nice to see stuff that's made in America, and then also the fact that they're using recycled materials. This wallet definitely isn't for everyone. It's just a single card slot, essentially, but if that fits your needs, this is an excellent option. It only weighs 12 grams as well, so I'm definitely going to be swapping out my wallet when I'm backpacking and out in the backcountry for multiple days. You know, I tend to follow more ultralight principles there, and you still need to bring your wallet with you in case you die or you need your credit card or some cash or something. So this is definitely going to be my new backpacking wallet for sure. It also has a lifetime warranty. It's only $15 and they have a ton of different color options available. I end up just getting the black for this video to match everything else in the setup. But take a look at Flowfold if you're into more minimalist style card holder wallets like this. For $15, bucks, you really can't go wrong. Even if you're on a budget, you can't have a proper EDC without a pocket knife, at least here in America. The pocket knife I ended up with for this loadout was the CR. KT Squid. Now this is a really compact but beefy and weighty blade. I was really surprised by the quality for the pricing. It's $24. It measures 5.7 inches long with just over a two inch blade. And for this small tiny size, it weighs 
100 grams or about 3.5 ounces. That's a pro or a con depending on your preferences or how you look at it. This thing is just really heavy for this small of a size for a pocket knife. It's an 8CR13 MOV blade. Honestly, that's not a blade seal I'm very familiar with, but I've been really impressed with the quality, especially for the price of $24. I've been kind of going back and forth on this form factor. I really like the small size of it. I think it makes it a really handy, useful tool. But I will say with this size, you know, if you have larger hands or even I'd say I don't think I have particularly large hands. I have long fingers, but it's not as fidgety because the size I can't really get a good grip on the thumb lock to flick this out. Um, so it's not going to be quite as fidgety as some other pocket knives, but if you have small hands, it might actually work a little bit better for you. But that would be my only really complaint using this for the past couple of months in preparation for this video. All in all, it's been a really great pocket knife, especially for 24 bucks, uh, solid build quality, you know, compact size, depending on your preference, that'll be good or bad. But if this sounds like it'd be a good fit for you, it's definitely held up for the price point in my opinion. Next up, my choice for flashlight for this build out was the Olight i3T. Now this is definitely a classic and a staple in terms of budget flashlights for EDC. I'd never had the chance to try or use one before, picked it up in preparation for this video and have been really happy with it. The form factor is really nice. You know, it's a little bit thicker than your average pen. It's about three and a half inches long. It takes a AAA battery, which I would definitely prefer over a built-in battery unless you have the option of a dual system like some of the Rovivon flashlights I've tested on here in recent months. It goes up to 180 lumens. The button on the back is really solid and feels great to use. Just nice and simple operation, no complications here. Small, compact, bright enough for most situations for 20 bucks. Uh, definitely a really solid pickup if you're in need of a new EDC flashlight. Next up on the list for a key organizer, we're seeing another repeat from the best Amazon under 200 video I did a few months back, but it is definitely the the best for the budget options from everything I've tried. That is the Orbit Key Active, their rubber version of their key organizer. Big fan of Orbit Key, especially in this price range for $25. I think it is well worth the extra few dollars compared to a Key Smart or a lot of the other options that are in that $10 to $20 range. It's a polymer TPU, kind of a soft touch rubber. I love the little finishings on here with some of the diagonal accent lines. Holds two to seven keys. Um, I've used Orbit Key for a couple of years now, so I have a lot of experience with it, and they've always held up really well for me. I will notice usually some loosening in the beginning stages, but it kind of settles after a week or so of use. Um, definitely a solid option if you're on a budget. You know, the leather variants, I think, are in like a $40 to $50 range. If you're looking to save some money and get the same quality, the rubber option is great for 25 bucks. The total for everything came out to exactly $100. I had a few alternatives and options I was considering, but ended up with this because I wanted that cohesive aesthetic. And these were definitely some really great options that I wanted to feature and share. I can share a couple of alternatives and substitutions though, if you're looking to save some money or if you're looking to budget in some other things that I didn't include in here, like a water bottle, a sling bag, stuff like that. For the key organizer, like like I just said, I really wouldn't recommend it, but you can save about 10 bucks if you want to go with something like a Key Smart. I think this is well worth the extra few dollars you're going to pay here, though. Uh, for the pocket knife, I almost ended up with the Apinel number no. eight. I think that's about $10 less than this and definitely a very well reviewed knife. I've never tried one personally, so I can't speak to it personally, but I know that is a crowd favorite in the budget range. And it's definitely a very different look. That was originally what I was gonna pick here, but I went a different way with kind of the design of everything. So check out the Apinel number eight if you're looking for a knife, you know, in that 15 to $20 range. For the watch, you know, the F91W is excellent and definitely the best cheaper option, I would say. You know, if you want something that's a little bit bigger, you know, my favorite long-term watch, the uh, World Time Watch, the AE1200. It's about three or four dollars more than this and a really great option. I think they're both just such iconic classics. I'm happy to have both. Um, and then in terms of wallets, I don't think you're gonna get much cheaper or better than this. Um, Amazon has quite a few options from just some random manufacturers that I wouldn't necessarily trust, but I haven't tried them in person. They just have big ugly logos on them, but there are some options if you want a more fleshed out wallet system 
system in this price range. But overall, I think this is an excellent setup for a hundred bucks. I'd love to hear what your current EDC setup is. If you have any really good budget options, tell me how wrong I am about some of these. Let's get a good discussion going. Uh, thank you all so much for watching though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.